uh, I'd like to start actually on uh, 910 because uh, I remember very vividly that I just uh, returned from a business trip uh, from the Midwest. And um, the night uh, before I flew in uh, on, a, on a commercial flight and I was sitting next to a young lady who was coming into New York City for the very first time. She was a sightseer. And uh, she'd asked my opinion about some of the sites to see. And I had told her about, uh, obviously, uh, the Lady in the Harbor, uh, Statue of Liberty, and the, um, the, the wonderful uh, uh, towers that we have. And ironically, uh, you know, some of the things that I'd mentioned to her were the very uh, focus of the attack. So I went home. And the next morning, uh, I decided I'd sleep in because I'd gotten in late. And my wife, Diane, woke me up. And she said, honey, she says, um, there's something happening in New York City, uh, the, the Twin Towers, a uh, plane flew into the Twin Tower. And uh, at that time, it was only one plane. And uh, as I woke, woke and, and, and got to the television, just at that time, as uh, a second plane uh, flew into the second tower. Uh, needless to say, like all Americans at that point in time, we were gripped uh, to our television for the next, uh, you know, several hours, if not days. And um, it had, um, I mean, just the atrocity of that horror, uh, it still affects people who were, were close to it. And uh, what I didn't know at the time is that I had a, um, a coworker uh, who I was working at the time uh, at the uh, Mutual of New York, who had a son who was in the tower right at the point of impact. And to add to that, there was a, um, a young man from our, our, our town in Ringwood, New Jersey, who was a very good friend of my, my, my son's growing up. And he was like a, one of my fourth sons. He was a, a proud member of the family who was also in the tower at that time, which I found out later. And, and so I had an immediate impact, personal impact upon me, not just the atrocity of the event itself, but that it had taken some lives of some very special people that was near and dear to my heart. Um, and at that point in time, it began to gnaw at me that this happened on American soil. It happened in New York City, of which I was based at the time. And I had been the recipient as a former professional athlete, a former New York Giant. I've been the recipient of so much uh, adulation and so much uh, recognition as a, as a member of the New York Football Giants that it dawned on me that I had a responsibility and I had a conviction that I should do something um, to respond in kind, to show my appreciation and to show my uh, thankfulness uh, for having um, had such a storied life as an adult that I wanted to be able to um, uh, do something to call attention to, to what I felt was a very compelling cause. Growing up in uh, Greenville, South Carolina, uh, in the segregated South, I had a very, um, um, shall we say, uh, well, it was a very difficult uh, childhood. And I always had this wanderlust uh, that I wanted to be able to see the America that I saw on television as a young kid, the Harriet uh, Fathers Knows Best and all of those kind of things. I wanted to see that kind of America because it wasn't what I was exposed to in the segregated South. And so I always had this desire to see America up close and personal. And you say, well, George, what does that have to do with 9-11? Well, I think that the two dovetail perfectly at the time. I wanted to be able to call attention to the fact that so many heroes of 9-11, first responders and all the medical techs and, and law enforcement who had responded, had been exposed to a, a, a lot of uh, uh, debris down uh, at the uh, World Trade Center. And as a result, they were getting illnesses, they were getting sick, and many of them were, were over a period of time were dying. And I felt, uh, I felt uh, as an American uh, celebrity uh, from New York, that um, I could call attention to their plight. And so I went to some very influential friends of mine at the time and I asked them, you know, I, I don't want to do another uh, golf outing. I don't want to do another, you know, fundraising dinner because those, although good and very meaningful, I wanted to do something more significant uh, that was commensurate with the event itself. And so um, <laughs> uh, I was talking to a very dear friend of mine by the name of Lee Reeves and uh, I told him about my desire to see America up close and personal. And I said, Lee, what if we, um, uh, what if I, at that time, it wasn't a we, it was just me singular. What if I walked across America and I linked 9-11 uh, with it as a fundraiser? And um, he thought for a moment, he said, what do you mean walk across America? How are you gonna walk across America? I said, well, simple, walk across America. He thought that the idea was, uh, was uh, too enormous. 
but he thought that it had some merit. And so at that point in time, I began to, I said to myself, George Martin as a former professional athlete has been called upon to call attention to so many uh, causes throughout my entire career. What if I, in return, asked those individuals to uh, support my idea uh, for um, raising funds for these, these heroes? And so I began to do that. I began to talk to every individual that I could think of, Shelly, and it was an extensive list. And without fail, every one of them, I and mean, we're talking hundreds of people, every one of them except one said yes. To me, that was an omen. And um, uh, I began at that point, I was so um, motivated and inspired by that, I began to put the pieces together uh, as to how I could uh, do this, this epic fundraiser. And uh, I was talking to the gentleman who I was working with at the time by the name of Dave Jurist, who is a, a central figure in the New York area because he heads up the Tomorrow's Children's Fund. And I was um, uh, an honorary member of that, that organization. And uh, he said, George, he says, I think it's a magnificent uh, idea. I think that it might be an enormous undertaking. So are you sure about this? And I said, absolutely sure. And uh, he says, well, what kind of name do you think you could associate with this? And Shelly, I went through a litany of, you know, off the cuff names and, and he started laughing. He said, he said, what is this for? And I said, it's for 9-11. Uh, he says, well, why don't you just call it a journey for 911? I mean, in retrospect, a, a stroke of genius. And, and, and that's how it started, Shelly. So uh, that was it. My uh, desire to help raise funds for the heroes of 9-11, uh, we came up with this, um, um, this organization, A Journey for 911. And uh, um, I mean, everything just sort of dove to, I was reading a, a manuscript that I, uh, I developed during the course of this. And I look back in retrospect and I saw how all these things begin to dovetail almost seamlessly. Uh, my agency at the time, uh, they gave us all the legal, free legal advice in order to establish a not-for-profit 9013C. Uh, there were individuals who, um, who contributed everything from shoes, I mean, donations, I mean, across the board, including money. And um, initially I said, well, if I can raise a million dollars, Shelly, that would be wonderful to help uh, first responders in, uh, of 9-11. And um, as I began to, to continue to put the pieces together, um, a colleague of mine, a coworker at the Mutual of New York at that time, he said to me, he said, George, he says, I think it's a great idea and I'd like to join you. I said, you're kidding. He said, yeah, I'd love to join you. And so when he came on board, the organization itself, Mutual of New York said, you know what? We will give you as much support as you need, including the time off to, um, to accomplish this. So um, uh, I'm sure you've heard of the name Bo Deedle, who has a very successful um, a security um, business in New York City. He came on board and he provided security for the entire trip um, free of charge. So we had a team, we had a five person team at, uh, just cut to the chase. We had, I had a road manager, I had a general manager, I had security, I had a medical technician that was provided by uh, Hackensack University Medical Center and uh, myself. So it was a five person team that, um, um, that we initially launched and we, it coincided with the start of the, the NFL season in which the New York Giants helped support the launch. Um, so I saw myself on the day of the launch walk from the George Washington Bridge um, to Giant Stadium on the opening day of that NFL season. And that would be the official launch to take me across uh, the United States. Now, one other thing that bears noting is that I also went to uh, three um, medical uh, institutions that I'd had a relationship with, most notably Hackensack University Medical Center. And I asked them that if I, I embarked upon this journey, would they uh, be supportive of it? And they said they would because for every dollar that I would raise, they would match it with an equal dollar of support. So that was, uh, that was such a motivation and to have three hospitals do that, and they would eventually become the recipients of the fundraising, it was, it was phenomenal. And so we put together uh, uh, this ragtag team of, of, of five of us, and um, we embarked upon the journey and opening day of the NFL season. It was a sensational um, send off. Uh, the media uh, covered it, and as you've already alluded to, you spoke to Jay Winnick, who was my PR guy, 
who just did a masterful job. As a matter of fact, he won an award for the job that he did. <clears throat> And we embarked upon um, uh, this journey, which I thought initially might take me, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, maybe a couple of months, <laughs> a little bit more. And uh, it was uh, something that was, um, that was um, it was just one of the greatest things that I could think. I mean, I won the Super Bowl. And to me, as a, as a, as a, a collective endeavor, as a team, I thought that was the, the, uh, the epitome of success. But embarking upon this journey for 911 and to do it all, almost as a solo endeavor, because I was the only one who did all of the walking, the 3,000 plus miles across the United States. To me, that was equivalent to, to winning a Super Bowl because it took, uh, took place over the course of, of, of nine months. And Shelly, the people that we met on the, on the road was, was an inspiration unto itself. That's a, that's a whole nother story because again, given my background, uh, being African American, walking across uh, you know all manner of of, of 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 areas in the country, I thought for certain that there would be some issues at some point in time. But I can tell you this: that not once during that entire uh, nine months, not once did we ever have a negative encounter. Not once, Shelly. We we walked across, and people came out in droves to meet us to support us, to ask us to come to their homes, to come to their business establishment, to come to schools, to come to universities and speak to their, their faculty, to speak to their student body. We estimated that I, that I spoke directly to well over a million uh, individuals uh, during that journey. And that was in conjunction with, with having a minimum objective, a minimum objective of walking 20 miles every day uh, for those nine months. And by the way, I'll add that we met that objective every day except one. And uh, that to me was, um, uh, was, was a tribute to the, the great team that I had, uh, the commitment that was there. Um, as a matter of fact, before I went on my journey, um, a very good teammate of mine and a Hall of Famer uh, by the name of Harry Carson said to me um, very profoundly, he said, George, for any reason that you can't finish this journey, I'm letting you know my promise that I will finish in your stead if that becomes necessary. So, I mean, it was like uh, the stars all aligned in my life um, to make this a success uh, for one time. And um, I gotta tell you, just some of the stories, uh, I hope I don't bore you to death. Uh, <laughs> some of the stories that, that I encountered um, are, are really epic. Uh, I always tell this one because it, it's kind of humorous. So we were walking, uh, I think we were in Oklahoma and um, it's, it's amazing to see the characteristics of every state and every town and city. And in Oklahoma, it's, uh, it's, it's always ubiquitous to see these uh, camouflage trucks with the gun racks in the back and, and these guns. And uh, you know, we were a little bit apprehensive and that's why I had security there for whatever reason. So one day we were walking and, and uh, uh, this pickup truck came up behind us and uh, again, it had the gun in the back and the gun rack and everything. And so um, we were accustomed to having people stop us out on the road. So that wasn't anything unusual. So, um, so I told the guys, hold up. We've got someone who's coming up behind us and um, out steps this guy. And I'm six foot five, I'm 270 pounds at the time. And, and out steps this guy who's about six foot eight and he's about a biscuit away from 300 pounds. I mean, just this enormous guy. And he's got the bib overalls. He's got the hat that he looked like he's been wearing since birth. He's got the beard. He's got, he's a typical, you know, uh, a local establishment guy. And he gets out the truck and he starts walking toward us. And I said to my team, I said, hey guys, hold up. Uh, I'll defuse the situation, whatever it is, I'll take care of it. So I walk over to the guy and I think that I'm, I'm being diplomatic and I extend my hand to him and I said, hello, sir, I'm George Martin uh, from the New York Giants. And he smacks my hand away. And at that point in time, I near saw myself because this guy was huge. And he comes up to me, Shelly, and he picks me up off the ground and he says, I don't want a handshake, I want a hug. And he picks me up off the ground. I mean, and I was just, I mean, I was just, just shell shocked. He says, I've been watching you guys for weeks and I couldn't wait till you guys got down here. He says, I wanted you guys, I wanted to invite you guys to our home. I want you to invite you over to the restaurant. And he says, I want to make a donation to a journey for 911. It uh, it almost brings me to tears to this day. I mean, it was just so 
compelling. And, and there were stories like that that happened singularly each and every day. There were scores of uh, young students that would come out <clears throat> uh, in the cars and there'd be just throngs of them come out. They pull in front of us and they say, you know, Mr. Martin, can we have your autograph? You know, and I'm thinking perhaps they were forming some mischief, but they were out just to, to, uh, to help support the cause and to, to meet me. And one of the more touching scenes was one day when we were out uh, riding, um, a young, uh, an elderly lady, midlife uh, lady pulled us over. And uh, I'd had uh, printed up some uh, photographs that I would give as autographs that, under those circumstances. So she pulled in front of us and she got out of the car and she had a little child with her. So I told my team, I said, hey guys, bring me up some autograph pictures because we've got a little kid here. So we wanna make sure that we give them a souvenir. So I walked over to the lady, assuming that, that she was the mother of the child. And I said, hello, ma'am, how are you? I'm George Martin. She says, yes, I know. She said, Mr. Martin, I apologize. I don't wanna hold you up. I don't wanna stop you. And I said, it's okay, we were, we're accustomed to that. And I said, I'll be glad to give you an autograph. She said, oh no. She says, we didn't come out here for an autograph. And I said, you didn't? She says, no, Mr. Martin. She says, this is my grandchild. And uh, I just wanted uh, her to see what an American hero looked like. And I wanted her to meet you. And I, you know, you could have bought me for a nickel at that point in time. I mean, I was just totally, it, it, it was just, and she then reached into her pocket and I could see that she wasn't a woman of means and she made a financial contribution to the journey. And my first reaction was, you know, I don't want to take her money because, you know, I don't want to, you know, create a, a financial situation for us. And my, uh, my road manager, Mr. Lee Reeves grabbed my arm and he, 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 we were so close, he knew what I was gonna do. He said, George, he says, you can't turn down the donation. She, he says, she's giving that from the heart. And that's something that she wants to set an example for her grandchild that will live forever. And he was absolutely right. So I reluctantly accepted the donation, but she wanted to teach her child uh, something about heroism. And she wanted to make a statement that she was willing to give, though small it was, it was a mighty lesson that she, that she taught her, uh, her grandchild. How much in all did you raise through a journey for 9-11? We raised in cash over $3 million for a journey for 911. So I kind of exceeded my, my goal. And uh, when you add that to the matching gifts, uh, that's a total of $6 million that, that went toward um, the first responders of 9-11. And um, that to me is, is not the biggest story. The biggest story are the throngs of heroes that I met uh, out on the road who, who gave and gave and gave um, as a matter of fact, Shelley, some of those relationships, you know, almost 13 years later still exist. And I'll give you one example. We were going through uh, New Mexico and uh, what would happen customarily on some occasions is that when we entered into a, a particular um, city limits, they would send out a policeman, fire truck or something like that to help escort us through their jurisdiction. And it was a, a means of support. And we'd become accustomed to that on some occasions. And one day um, um, a patrol officer came out and he was very excited. And he says, hello, Mr. Martin. He said, I met, he says, I, I wanna be able to provide an escort for you through, the, uh, through my jurisdiction here in town. He says, we've really been looking forward to it and we're very excited about it. And I said, oh, great. Well, we, we really, and I said, you're welcome to, to come out and join me. And a lot of people would get out of their cars and they'd walk with us. So anyway, we walked through the jurisdiction and it was a wonderful time. We met some of the townspeople, which again was our custom, some of the dignitaries, the mayors, uh, some of the people of town council, you know, some of the um, uh, people who had businesses. And uh, many times they'd invite us uh, to come to their establishments and eat and, or to present us with um, uh, a token of their appreciation. So we did that. And as we were leaving the jurisdiction, um, this officer said to me, he says, you know, I'm gonna call ahead because I want my neighboring uh, town to provide a similar service for you when you walk through there. And I said, oh, great, that would be perfect. So anyway, he calls uh, ahead and he speaks to the, uh, the captain or whoever it was in the next jurisdiction. He says, hey, listen, George Martin's coming through the fundraiser for 9-11. He says, we gave him an escort through. He says, I'd like for you to be able to provide an escort 
for him as he goes through your, your town. And the gentleman on the other side said, absolutely not. And Shelly, this officer went ballistic. He absolutely unloaded on this guy. I mean, we were watching it in, in, in wonderful horror as he said, do you realize what this is? And he, he, he reeled off a litany of reasons why this should be appropriate. And the guy on the end was unfazed by it. So that officer, against all odds and against protocol, provided an escort through the neighboring town. He was that committed to it. And I will never forget that. And to this day, we are still friends. We communicate regularly by email. And uh, he's now, since then, retired. We have a relationship where we communicate and we, we interact. And um, I will never forget that guy. He's just, he's just a wonderful, wonderful, dedicated American citizen who understands the importance of what real patriotism is all about. That $6 million you raised, where did it go exactly? That's a well, lot of money. It's a lot of money, but what we did is we, we divided it into three tranches. So it was, it was actually $3 million divided up among three hospitals that would then have matching gifts for it. So we gave a uh, million dollars to Hackensack uh, University Medical Center. We gave one to, uh, to uh, Long Island Jewish. And forgive me, I forget the way the third one went, but those uh, $3 million were divided up among the three hospitals. And they then provided um, uh, medical uh, uh, care for first responders and uh, uh, those people who were active down at the, uh, at the tragedy. Because you did this walk in what year? This was no, Shelly, you really, you really tested me now. So it was about uh, 2011, I think, somewhere around there. I, I, I think it was 2008 to 2009. I think that's what it was, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, I sometimes get it, get it confused. But what people don't realize is you did this walk and raised this money because at the time, the government was not providing for the health care of these heroes who now we have either lost 9-11 illnesses or the ones who have survived to work that pile for those months. They're waiting for cancer. They don't wonder if they're going to get cancer. They're wondering when they're going to get cancer. So George did this walk. It not only raised money to provide for the health care, but it raised awareness that helped and uh, really pass the law that then provided for these first responders and the 9-11 community. Because at first we just thought the 9-11 first responders were the only ones ailing. But no, it was a week after 9-11, the EPA said the air was safe. People went back to their homes. They went back to their schools. They went back to their jobs. They went back to their lives. And 400,000 people today are at risk or don't realize that their cancers over the last 19 years were caused by 9-11. It just never ends, George. But you raised awareness, and you were the one who got me involved because I felt the way you did of how dare we turn our backs on these hero first responders. We've got to take care of them. And I joined your local march because yes. months later, uh, we did a walk to Giant Stadium. Only time I got to be on the field of Giant Stadium. Lucky you. <laughs> I know, lucky me. I was, ah! uh, and that is where I met John Feel. Mm -hmm. Is was instrumental in getting all of this past, all over the years. And yeah. um, so I thank you, George Martin. Well, Michelle, I, I, that, that was the whole uh, purpose of a journey for 911 was for me to show my appreciation. You know, John Field and I, we embarked upon a couple of things uh, jointly because he similarly had a, a fundraiser and he brought a lot of attention down in, in DC to the cause. Uh, I was privileged to have been called and testified before Congress on two occasions. And uh, ultimately, uh, I was recognized by Congress for my efforts, which I was uh, really humbled by. 
but you're absolutely right. There was the, the mission was really twofold. Number one was to raise money uh, directly for first responders, but as you so aptly pointed out, to raise, to call attention to their plight because it was being ignored by Washington at the time. And I thought that was just an absolute travesty. Uh, and, 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 and you're right, John Fields was just, he was absolutely a champion uh, to this cause. And so when I had the opportunity to team up with him, uh, I mean, I know he's smaller in stature than I am, but I looked up to him because of what he did. He was so full of convention, conviction. And uh, he's a guy who I admire to this day. Thank you, George. Is there anything else you want to add? Well, I, I, I will add this, that um, in retrospect, as, as I walked across the country, uh, I, I came up with a, um, a conclusion, Shelley, um, and it's this, that there's far more that, that, that links us, that joins us, than there is that divides, divides us. Um, the journey was a, a, a once in a lifetime experience. It really was. It was magnificent in every scale. And when we concluded the journey in, um, in San Diego, California, the, um, the amount of dignitaries, the amount of people who had supported, the amount of relationships that we had forged was epic. It was absolutely epic. And um, I don't think I can remember the Super Bowl that we won as clearly as I remember a journey for 911. It is something that is indelibly etched in my heart. Uh, in my mind, and it is something that I will never forget. And the relationships, as I said, that I forged along the way, uh, they still exist in, in droves. And uh, I'm a better man for having experienced a journey from 911. And we're all better because of it. Thank you so much, George Martin. Thank you, Shelley.